guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with a guide to Lorraine Heath. Now, I want to preface this and say I have not read all of her backlist yet. I have read 18 of her books, and that means I have read five of her series, and I thought that was a good place to start to let you know where to start and what my favorite books of hers are that you should start with. And so I thought I had read a good chunk of her backlist. I still have seven series I haven't touched, which means I have 25 books I still have to read of hers, but that's okay because some of them are like two or three book series. I have not read her six book series yet, but I have read five of them and I feel like I am qualified enough to talk about where you should start with her. So I will go ahead and get to them. I'm also interviewing her on the 19th on my channel coming up super quick with Tori from Novel Life. We are so excited to talk to Lorraine Heath. I discovered Lorraine Heath's books last year and they're so reminiscent of like old bodice rippers for the plots because some of them are crazy and she loves her plot twist which is what made me fall in love with her. My friend Lisa from Remarkably Lisa had told me to read once more my darling rogue and I was like okay I guess I'll give it a shot but I guess I'd actually picked up Lord of Temptation when it came out in 2012 so I had read Lorraine Heath in 2012 but I didn't really consistently read her until this year and I actually just reread this for the series because I did not remember anything from 10 years ago but I am so excited to talk about her if you guys have been following me this past year you know how obsessed I became with Lorraine Heath so I'm gonna get to her books a lot of them have like brooding damaged heroes such fun plot twists, a lot of angst, so get ready for some good recommendations. I'm going to start with my most recent series by her, and that is the Lost Lords of Pembroke series, and this series is about three brothers who have lost their father, and they were young. They were like 12, I think, two of them were, because there was there's twins, and then there's the youngest brother, and their father was actually murdered by their uncle because their father was the duke, and their uncle wants the title, but the three brothers are in the next in line to get the, the dukedom and so they know their uncle's gonna kill them and their uncle locks them in a tower but the heroine is actually their neighbor and she's like 11 at this point maybe 12. She is super close with the oldest brother Sebastian and so she finds out what happened she helps them escape and so they all three go through some pretty terrible things growing up on the streets for I think they're gone for like 10 or 12 years and so Sebastian promised our heroine that he would be back for her but 10 to 12 years have passed, and Sebastian has been in the war. He is heavily scarred on his face. He can't use one eye. And Tristan was at sea for a long time. That's Sebastian's twin brother. And then Rafe is probably the darkest out of all of them, so I'll get to him. But in the first book, She Tempts a Duke, it is a second chance romance because they were so close as children, and they were just enamored with each other, and they had this special bond. And so now our heroine's actually engaged, and she never thought she would see him again, but he is back in town. Him and his brothers like crash a ball and they demand the dukedom and they're right and they're like he tried to kill us as children now we're back and we want what's ours and she is doesn't know what to do and she like I said is actually engaged to someone so she's pretty off limits but she can't stay away from him he gets himself into some sticky situations and she's there to help him and it is such a sweet romance and I love a romance where they're already with someone or they're off limits and this one has that we have the brooding duke he's taking over the dukedom and he's a scarred hero and it was just has so many tropes I loved. This series doesn't necessarily have a lot of twists and turns like her other series does because this one is the most fresh in my mind because I just read it over the past month but I love the fact that the brothers kind of don't know how to cope with what they went through and don't know how to talk about it especially Rafe. I just finished his book like two days ago and so they they feel guilty especially Sebastian because he's the one who kind of made them all go their separate ways so they wouldn't get caught and he could and protect his brothers. It's such a good series. And then the next one, this is the one that I read 10 years ago and I have no recollection of reading it. I'm pretty sure I read an e-arc from the publisher because that's when I was getting into reading historicals and I had started my blog in 2011 so that's when I was getting arcs. But this one is Tristan's story and Tristan's definitely much more playful than Sebastian was and Tristan actually is a sea captain and our heroine is wanting to go and find her, her fiance. And that's all we know. And she asks her brothers who are very not good and very overprotective, but like not in a endearing way. They're just like very 
domineering, I guess, and I don't really like her family, but she wants to find her betrothed, and so she decides to hire Tristan, and then she, because she hears, like, he'll go take her, she meets him, and she's like, uh, heck no, and so then she tries to find someone else to take her, but Tristan tells them he'll pay them double to not take her, whatever she offers, so she's in a bind, and she decides, okay, fine, like, you will take me on this journey, and he does, so a lot of this is at sea, and you learn a little bit more about her and her fiance, and it is just such a good romance. That's all I want to say. I, I can't say really anything else without spoiling this because this does kind of have a twist to it too, but if you like At Sea and you like a hero that has a damaged past, but he's not as hurt by it as the other ones, I would read this one. And then we have Lord of Wicked Temptation, which is Rafe's story, and Rafe is kind of more estranged from his brothers. He doesn't really talk to them that often. He's very brooding. He owns his own, I think it's a gambling hell that he owns, and after her father dies, our heroine is auctioned off. She is the illegitimate child of her father, and so the hero, we again have like a really awful sibling, and he decides to pretty much auction her off, and Rafe sees it happening, and he decides to step in and take her and she thinks she's being like auctioned off as a bride but in reality it's as a mistress and so she just like really wants a family and a husband and children but um that's not what happens and so she is auctioned off and it has to move in with Rafe and Rafe is pretty much like well, you're gonna be my mistress now but he is determined to take care of her which I loved and he's very protective of her he like helps her get some of her things from her brother and he though is like I'm never gonna love anybody like I just don't have that capabilities and he is so damaged because he lost his mother in childbirth so his mother died giving birth to him and he also just remembers loving his father but then his father dying too and he probably went through the most horrifying things out of all the three of them he had to be like a child worker and very very poor conditions and so he shares that with her and it's just so good and they really like each other and she doesn't know if she can be a mistress or not to him and I really enjoyed this one. This one has just a lot of brooding on our hero's part and our heroine just like has nowhere to turn so she has to turn to our hero and I really enjoyed this one as well. This is a great series to start with because it's pretty short. There might be a novella in this series that I haven't read but I like these three. I'm pretty sure they're actually is a novella that I haven't read, but you have three brothers who all cope with what, what they went through in different ways, and Lorraine Heath loves a damaged hero, so I recommend starting with this one if you want a good place to start that doesn't have a lot of of connections to it because the next series I'm going to recommend is the Scoundrels of St. James series and that actually has a spin-off series which is the Scandalous Gentlemen of St. James. So if you want to like go all in, start with the Scoundrels of St. James. This series I devoured at the end of last year and I'm obsessed. We have four friends who grew up on the streets together. In In Bed with the Devil, our hero actually learns that he has inherited a title. He grew up on the streets and he discovers though that he might be the son of an earl and that the earl dies and so he can take the place. He is determined to help the woman in their group. There's four of them. He want, and the, so there's three boys and the girl and they are all super overprotective of the girl and so he is like, I need to marry her to give her a good life and he like thinks he loves her but it's more of like a protective love and not like a all-consuming romantic love but he's just like, I'm gonna marry her and so our heroine, she needs someone killed and she's like, I've heard that the earl has killed in his past and so that's like rumors going around and so she confronts him and is like will you kill someone for me and he's like excuse me and he is intrigued and so he says if you help my betrothed become a lady I will help you and so he that they strike up a deal. And so they obviously start falling for each other, but she's supposed to be helping his betrothed become more, like, adapted into society since he is a titled now. He wasn't before, and he's like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And so it's he's definitely very brooding, and they go through very, very bad things on the streets, especially the female in their friend group. All the guys are, I think it was Franny, all the guys are so overprotective of her because some of them do feel like it's their fault, and the, him killing someone had to do with what had happened to her, and it's just such a good series, and I really like this. So this is a really great first book, and you get to see the whole friend group get their happily ever afters, and they like kind of have to do with one another because our heroine in this book, her brother, ends up being with Franny, so they're good. I'm like rereading the synopses of these to remind myself what they're about, and this one has a twist, and it's like 
it's good. So in the second book, which is Between the Devil and Desire, this is Jack Dodger's book. And Jack is a thief, and so all of their names have to do with like what they're good at. So he's Jack Dodger, he's a thief, like he dodges people, and then Franny, Franny Darling. So she's called Darling because that's what they, they called her, Darling. And so anyways, he is named the, I don't know what you call it, he gets like the responsibility of this man's fortune and wife and child, and he was like, I don't know why this is happening and so he had met her husband like once or twice and now he gets everything and is like in charge of everything and so our heroine is like what like what did you have to do with my husband and they have to live together because now he moves in and it's just she's confused but they start liking each other and she's a single mother she has a, a child she's a widower and then her and Jack stripe up strike up a relationship but there's definitely a lot more to it and this one's a little bit of a twisty one. This one is definitely dark as well because there are things that have to do with child abuse so know that going in but Jack is so good with her son and I really loved the connection that they had together and if you want a single mom romance I don't think that Lorraine Heath writes that trope too often but I loved it in this one. Then we have Surrender to the Devil which is Franny's story and in this one Franny falls for the Duke who is our heroine in book one's brother, I believe. Franny is actually determined to help save young children from the streets, and she knows she cannot trust people who are titled. She went through a very traumatic experience growing up on the streets herself as a female growing up in the streets, and she has her three overprotective best friends, one of them who tried to marry her, another one who was kind of in love with her that she didn't love back. Franny also is like a working woman. She helps out the guys at this establishment they own. I don't remember exactly what it was, but she's really good with numbers, and so she's pretty wealthy herself, and she will go and into really dangerous situations just to save children and be someone who's there for them and our Duke gets so irritated with her for putting herself in those dangerous situations but it's such a good romance. Definitely a class difference to romance and I enjoy this one as well to finally get to Franny's story because we've seen her since book one. Okay so this one's James Swindler's story and this one had a twist that I did not see coming. So I started it and I was like uh this is fine but like where's this plot going? Our heroine she lost her sister so she wants revenge and so our hero actually works for the police and so he was told to like watch out for her because he knows that she's out for revenge against this man who she blames for her sister's death and there is a giant twist in here that I did not see coming that I was like what is the heck is gonna happen now like oh my gosh. And then the hero is kind of like, they're kind of like on the opposite sides of the law because she's trying to kill this guy and he's working with the police and he's supposed to get kind of close to her but like they're falling for each other in the process and she has this huge secret and this one probably is my favorite of the series. I did not expect the twists in here so if you really like those twisty kind of things, pick up this book. There is a fifth book which I actually thought was a novella but I haven't read yet and so I don't know. Let me check the page length. So it's The Last Wicked Scoundrel and it says it's book five and but it doesn't have a cover that's similar to the other ones so I'm wondering it's Avon yeah it's a novella I've not read this one yet this one is William Graves oh he's the physician so I do need to read this one but I haven't yet but uh the four main novels in this series are absolutely amazing and probably Mm, I don't know because the other series I have like my favorite standalone book in them but this one overall like four and a half out of five stars for every single book so read the series. So after the series you're gonna want to immediately jump into the Scandalous Gentlemen of St. James series because that's their children and I read them backwards. I did not know that they were related which I'm kind of annoyed that I read them backwards but I love seeing them their parents and like in the epilogue I'm like oh my gosh but that's the child as an adult in the book I've already read so read them in order because you'll get the most of it but the first one is When the Duke Was Wicked and this one I think was also one of my first ones that I read that got me back into Lorraine Heath and this one our heroine is very wealthy and she wants a husband and she wants her childhood friend the Duke of Lovingdon to actually help her and so he is a widow and he lost his the love of his life and so he's like I'm never gonna get married again and he's like well okay I can help you find a, a suitable match but he starts falling for her and he gets really angsty because the, our heroine in here is so different than his wife and he was like how could I possibly love two completely different women he's like does that invalidate the love I had for the woman I lost and then our heroine is just trying to find a guy who's not after her for her money so this one is a really fun one to read and definitely a fun start to the series the next book in the series is once more my darling rogue which is one of my favorite amnesia romances and this one our hero and heroine do not get along because our hero was adopted in like 
I loved his character in the book. When we saw him get adopted by them, I was like, oh my gosh, is he the one in this book? And he is. He was raised on the streets and didn't really have that great of a childhood until he was taken in by his adoptive parents. And so our heroine is actually super wealthy and she judges him so much for being a self-made man. And she's really nasty. She's really spoiled. And someone tried to kill her. So she was found in the Thames and she can't remember who she is. He finds her and he gets an idea and he's like, I'm going to tell her she's my maid. And it's kind of like Overboard, which is the Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell movie. And she ends up being his maid and she's like, I don't get it. She's like, I don't feel like I'm a maid. She's like, I want to shop and I want to do these things and I'm, this isn't normal for me. But she does it anyways. They fall for each other. Then they have to deal with the repercussions of knowing who she really is. This one is so good and one that I really, really wish I read after that other series because you really get to see the beginning of his story in that series. But this one's so good. And the setbacks are always so gorgeous on all of her books. This series might actually be my favorite series because it also has The Duke and the Lady in Red, which is one of the most heartbreaking books you will read in, in all of Lorraine Heath's books. And in this one, our hero and our heroine meet at a ball and it's like instant connection between them. They're infatuated with each other, but she has a family she needs to take care of and she's trying to get money from men. And so he's the Duke and she's like, well, I, I need money for a certain reason. Can you help me out? And he's like, sure but she's really trying to take it from him and run so literally she's like out the door to run away and he shows up and he figured out what she did and he's like if you really want my money spend a week with me and so it goes on from there the duke is so kind about what was happening with her family and there's just one person in her family that breaks my heart and it was just such an emotional read. I cried in this. The romance is amazing. It's like, I fell for you at first sight and there's no one else in the world but you for me. But the hero is just so brooding because she was gonna take his money from him. And I just, I love this book so much in this series. The last two in the series, the last novel and the novella are not my favorite. So I don't know if this series is like technically my favorite because I really love two and three and I think I get book one four stars but An Affair with a Notorious Heiress just kind of missed the mark for me but this one is about our heroine who has a really bad reputation so she ruined her reputation on purpose and she just has a bad reputation and our hero has saved his reputation from a mother who had a bad reputation so he's like I need to marry very well and so he sets its sights on her sister who has a very proper background and reputation and so our heroine and that was super overprotective of her sister and they butt heads all the time and it's what I really did like about this book though was that her younger sister kind of saw their spark from the beginning so she never had any intention of marrying our hero she's like no like my sister is gonna marry you and so I really liked their dynamics together but this one didn't have enough like the typical twists and turns of a Lorraine Heath book, it was just fine. I have such high expectations for Lorraine Heath that this one was just kind of good, but it didn't reach that standard of her books that I have, and so that's why I gave this three stars. It's still a good read. If you like romances that aren't high angst and high drama, I think you would like this one. And then the next one, though, is her sister's story, which is Gentlemen Prefer Heiresses. So that is the younger sister story, and this one was fun. This one is actually her romance with her sister's husband's brother. So the guy who was trying to marry her, his brother. He's the second son. He really doesn't want to get married, but then I believe they got in a compromising position. She wants to do something not ladylike and asks for his help. So they have to deal with the repercussions of being caught, and this one isn't as memorable to me. Like, I'm really fuzzy on the details, and it was a novella, but I still think it was a good way to end off the series, because we got to see the sister have her happily ever after, when she was such an endearing character in the previous book, but this first three books in this series definitely are my favorite. Okay, so so the next series is the Hellions of Havisham series, and this series are three boys who are, the three, um, there's four books, but there's three boys who are taken in by the Mad Marquess, and so their parents all died, and they are horrified that their parents died, and so they are taken in by this Marquess, and he's known as the Mad Marquess, and they, they are a little damaged, which Lorraine Heath loves. Oh, there were four of them. That's right. There's three, there's three books, but there were four of them, which I'll get into. So the first one is Minerva Dodger. So it's Jack's daughter and she wants to be a spinster. So she's had six seasons and she's like, I'm just going to be a spinster. It's fine. But she still wants to feel 
wanted. And so she goes to a club and she meets our hero and he is so interesting. He loves photography and they spend a really good night together, but nothing really happens during that night. But he is like, I can't forget this woman. And she's really not like any woman he's met before. And so they start an affair and this one is a really, really good romance. I do love a good spinster romance. And I think Lorraine Heath also loves her like pleasure club romances because I have another one in here that does have that. But this one was a definitely a really fun book. And and the next books in the series amazing. The next book is The Earl Takes All. So in this one, like I said, I thought there were three boys, but there are four because two of them are twins and one of them dies. And so our hero has been in love with his brother's wife since they were courting. And he acts like he hates her. And they all go on a trip to Africa together. And his brother tells him, if something happens to me, you need to take my place because she's pregnant. She's miscarried before. You need to make sure she's not emotionally traumatized from losing me and she will see this baby to term. His brother dies. And so he has to come back as his brother acting like he himself died. This is probably my favorite Lorraine Heath of all time. This one, so much angst. And our heroine is like, wow, you've changed. Like, are you okay? You're not as intimate with me. Like, what's going on? And of course, it's going to come out that he's really not his brother, but all of society thinks that he died. So he gets to see, like, how people see his funeral and think of him because he was a second son. So he, like, didn't take things too seriously. But he, he did it on purpose. And it was just the most angsty, heart-wrenching romance that I have ever read. Like, obviously, she's going to find out who he is and that her actual husband's dead. And, oh, my gosh, it was so good. Because he already has to deal with the grief and guilt of losing his brother. And it was so good. Like so good. Book three is The Viscount and the Vixen. This one started off a little slow, so we have our hero is like, I'm never gonna marry, but then the Marquess, who they live with, he decides to put an ad in the paper for someone for him to marry because he's like, I'm never gonna have an heir, so might as well make another one, and the hero is like, uh, what are you talking about? And so our heroine is literally desperate, and so she answers the ad, and she's fully intending to marry this old Marquess, but she ends up marrying the son instead, and that is his... The the Marquess's like end goal is for his son to actually marry this woman and not him and they have such an intense connection and are really intrigued by each other and start a romance but she has a secret that she is hiding and that is the reason why she needed to, to marry someone. So this one has another twist with our secrets thrown in and I just really loved seeing the Marquess more in this one because we get his novella after this. Never have I cried in a novella until this book. So you know he's the Mad Marquess and you know he talks to his dead wife. So you know going into this book, she's gonna die. Like, it is his romance with his wife. How they met, it is a friend to lovers, it's called When the Marquess Falls, and it is the most endearing, heartwarming, emotionally traumatizing book I've ever read because we see them as best friends but he's a Marquess and she is a baker's daughter and they're so close though and his mother's like you need to marry and have an heir like I'm throwing a ball and he's like well I'll only go if she can come with me and he's like if you let her come with me I'll I'll look at your prospects for me like I'll see if I can get married and so they go to this ball together and it's magical and they fall in love but you know that she dies because she's dead in the series. Oh my gosh. But then everything like pieces together of why he acts the way he does. And you, if you ha read this, you have to read the series in order to get the full effect of this book. But it's amazing. Five stars. This whole series is just so amazing. And I love it so much. You might want to start with this one. But like don't set the bar too high. Because you're gonna, this is the best one. So I don't know. If you want to start high, read the series first. But if you want to like make your way to it, wait for a little bit. This is already a super long video. But I have my last two. Which in are her Once Upon a Dukedom series. I believe her third one comes out this summer. Because she has a historical fiction book coming out first. But it is the Once Upon a Dukedom series. We have these two. This is her only one in this size. We'll see if any more get in this size. But I actually read this first. Don't skip this one. This one is so good like these these both are so good like she is still coming out strong like her books are amazing so scoundrel of my heart is a really good romance because our heroine is really good friends with our hero's sister she really needs to get married to gain an inheritance and so our hero learns that she needs to marry someone titled in order to get this house that is so close and near and dear to her heart and so they spend time together and they really start falling for each other but our hero is like 
you need to get what you want and that's not me like you need to marry someone titled to have this life that you want Ugh, it's so good and we actually have a time jump in here as well so our heroine answers the ad to the duke from this book and the duke has put out an ad for a duchess and she's like this is perfect i'll marry him this is what i need and she answers the, the ad and she's like unlike any other woman she is very outspoken and very intelligent and she doesn't want to be a docile wife she like wants to be respected equally in a marriage and our hero knows he can't have her and so he actually opens a club for non-titled people people who aren't like having it all he has a bad past because his father was actually um accused of treason and found guilty and so his entire family goes to shambles and so we have her then showing up at his club and it is just very angsty i absolutely love this book so read this one and then you'll get the duke story in here so the duke is the one who put out a an ad for a duchess because he needs to get married he needs to have heirs and our heroine is uh, Penny Peace, which is, that's her Penelope, and her I think her last name's Penny Peace because he always calls her Penny Peace. She is his assistant, and so it's social class difference. He needs to marry someone who could be in society, who is titled. She's not. She works for him, but there is mutual pining in here. Like, they both are super into each other, but neither one of them has done anything about it, and it's so good. So he also realizes, like, the condition she's in. She's living as a servant, and he's like, no, you deserve, like, the duchess's quarters. Like, he moves her, and it gives her better furniture, and there's, like, a caretaking scene in here that's amazing and she's trying to figure out who to have that be his wife and I love that trope of I'm trying to help you get married to someone else they're both hiding secrets in here as well and they come out at the end and I just I just love this book so much I give this one five stars too like her two newest releases are five star reads for me so she will forever be a favorite author of mine that was very long but I just had to talk about all these books I talked about 18 books in here and I have so many more of hers to read she has a lot more of her backlist she does have like a text I think she has two Texas series actually and I have not read any of her books that take place in America so I typically don't gravitate towards those historicals but I really want to try out hers but as you saw I've only given like two of her books three stars and everything else is a four or five star read for me I'm obsessed with them make sure you check out her books I listen to almost all of hers on audio as well my library is a great resource for that so check out her audiobooks they are amazing and that's all I have for her let me know your favorite book by her I think this Earl of mine is my favorite but like these two I loved as well but like these two I loved as well like I can't pick a favorite but if you want some amazing brooding heroes some crazy plots check out Lorraine Heath and that's all I have as always thank you so much for watching and have a good day bye